One of the things that's very important is I want to be able to tell you how to log in. And uh, I'm on campus, so anytime you're on campus, whether you're physically on campus or you're just using the wireless, maybe you're outside the, of a building using wireless, it, it recognizes your IP address of the computer on the network and it, it does not make you log in. Uh, I want to give you an example of what it looks like when you log in. And I'm going to go uh, find a particular source that will uh, that I know is going to make me log in, whether I'm on campus or not. And one of those is going to be a particular uh, electronic resource for APA. And when I click on that, um, I see that it's going to call for a login. And it says, hey, log in with your W number. And then log in with your six digit birth date. And I click that and it should pull it right up. It's saying, hey, there it is. So here's the document. This kind of login um, box is going to pop up every time you go into um, one of the databases or you go into uh, an ebook or something of that nature or a video, you're going to have to log in. So I just want to make sure you know how to do that. Okay, now we want to talk about how we can use some of these. 150 databases that we have. I'm going to go to articles and databases um, and I want, we've got some choices here. We can do databases by subject. So let's say you're um, in a philosophy class. You have no idea what database to use. Go to subjects and then go over to philosophy and it's going to give you a, a list of good philosophy related databases. Okay, um, But Maybe you're in an English class. You, you know, you might use the databases for English, and it'll give you good databases related to the study of English language and literature and writing. You can also do something different that might be helpful to you. You can do uh, articles and databases, and you can go by databases by name. Maybe your uh, professor wants to give you a particular database. Uh, to you it says look I want you to get all your articles for this particular um, topic I want you to get it from Project Muse you say well what do I do I'm gonna go to database by name then I'm gonna go over to N to P and we're gonna go to Project Muse and I'm gonna click on it it's gonna bring me right in and then I'm going to have all my articles gonna come from Project Muse we can also use the favorite databases I want to talk about those two to find articles we're going to go to Academic Search Complete. It's a huge database. It's part of the EBSCO company and it's going to cover everything from chemistry articles to business articles to articles on literature and that sort of thing. So I'm going to do a search, Academic Search Complete, and I'm going to say, okay, here I am. I've got my database up. Academic Search Complete is a general database. It's like the Walmart of databases, covers all different topics and it's huge. But I want to make sure that I click full text. The reason I want to click full text is so that I only get articles that I can actually see, uh, actually print, actually get a copy of. If I don't click full text, a percentage of the articles are going to just be citation. The actual article's not there. And if you're off campus only, it's going to be very difficult to get that article immediately, maybe in a timely manner. Uh, you would have to use something called interlibrary loan. It may take a few days. And so, uh, a good idea to click full text if you're especially if you're in a you know 100 200 level uh, undergraduate course we're going to do a search again we're going to do this time student loans and we're going to do student loans and then I got some options I can do and or not I want to talk about those three boolean operators uh, this is something that libraries use often uh, we describe and teach this often and narrows or focuses a search the more you and together the more those keyword of those keywords, they all have to show up in the in the particular uh, record to come up. That's what we do most of the time. You can also use or, or expands. A good reason to do or is if you're going to do synonyms. Like you might do student loans. We'll do that search, and in this database we get twenty one thousand back. But you say you know it, it might be okay. A good idea for me to do student loans or student debt because sometimes it's used. Uh, similarly, so now instead of 21,000, we're going to have uh, 21,800. We get a few more. 
Uh, so that's OR. It expands. OR expands. It does multiple searches at once. An example of using OR is that like if you're in a biology class, uh, you might do crawfish or crayfish or the scientific name for crawfish if you're searching for uh, research on that topic. Maybe you're writing a paper on it. But in this case, we're doing synonyms, student loans or student debt. But I might want to narrow it down. I might want to just narrow it down to something pr particular like uh, mental health. Uh, we're down to 237. First one is going to be a periodical. In this particular database, uh, this first one, Generation Z gets to work. It's going to be from Newsweek Global. It's 2019 article. It's a periodical, which is a magazine. Now you you got some choices. You can just learn more about it. Go to the magnifying glass, title, author, sources, always your journal name. Uh, you can go into the abstract and look at uh, what the article's about. That's a description. And then you got some choices. You can get it as an HTML. That's going to be plain text, no page numbers. Typically, it's basically even usually lo loses your actual images like pictures and so, so forth. Flipster's great. You can go into Flipster and that's great to read the article like just like it is in a magazine. It has a very similar feel to being in that magazine. But for what we're going to do right now, we're going to go into HTML. We're going to pull it up. You can see you can listen to the article. You can save it to the Google Drive, so forth. But if you go in and you say, okay, I'm going to I'm reading this article and I'm going to quote this. I'm going to quote this from, uh, uh, from this paragraph and I'm going to put this uh, in my paper and I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to cite it. But notice you can't cite a page number because there's there is no page number. As we scroll down, this is a fairly lengthy article. I bet when we get to the end, we're going to see a bunch of photographs and images and so forth that aren't there. It's because it's an HTML, it's plain text, and they're saying, "Hey, we had a photo there, but we can't show it to you because this is a plain text article." So in a magazine, we're going to go back to our results list. Let's look at another source. Uh, this next one, a certainty of hopelessness debt, depression, and the discharge of student loans under the bankruptcy code. That's a little dated article. It's 2009. You see that? Uh, it's going to be from a journal called Law and Psychology Review. I can just look at that and tell. It's italicized. But I can, if I went over to my magnifying glass and see that it's under source, that's my journal name. Uh, and if I want that one, it's a 16-page article. I can pick the PDF. If I click on it, it'll pull up. And uh, you'll notice that it's going to be formatted just like this law review, this journal. And if I scroll down, it's got, you know, footnotes. If I quote from this particular sentence here, notice that I've got the page numbers up top, page 152, and uh, there we go. We're set. Uh, if we want it, we can print it, we can download it, we can save it to the Google Drive, so on and so forth.